All right, let's see if we can get this thing to six Gs. Luke is strapping in to do the aerobatic restriction removal, so this airplane is gonna be having its full potential unlocked, and I'm super excited to fly this thing the way it's meant to be flown. Good vertical. If you've seen any of the aerobatic training that we've covered, then you already know Luke from Harv's Air Inverted. This longtime friend of the Flight Chops channel is here to take the RV-14 to the next level. All right, Steve, I think you got yourself an aerobatic airplane. All right, this is pretty exciting. We've been waiting to do this for a long time. Yes! The next three days are gonna be busy. Looking at the schedule of the weekend and like what weather we have and what we wanna get done and trying to figure out, can we get it all done? <laughs> I think we can. And of course, Luke couldn't not fly the museum airplanes as well. So Luke is getting the Canadian Aviation Museum crew experience. He's doing the chipmunk checkout now, and we're gonna try to get him into the Harvard solo within a couple days, which I think for Luke is gonna be possible. This RV-14 would not exist if it wasn't for the support and experience that I've gained being a part of the Yellowbird crew here. And today, we're adding another very special pilot member. I'm excited to have Luke Penner here. The impetus was to get the RV-14 aerobatics restriction removed, but we're gonna do a lot more than that, having him sign up and go through an accelerated training program to be a part of the Yellowbirds. What's the biggest tail wheeler plane you flew? Biggest one, probably a Sukhoi 26. We're gonna do the first flight in the 14. That, that's your AFR, your, your essentially endorsement to solo the 14. You're gonna do the acro sign off in the 14. At some point, whether it happens immediately after or later, Steve needs to get his acro sign off in the 14. I want to send you out with Ron for the acro in the in the Harvard. I mean, I could do it, but not as well as Ron. <laughs> so love it. Ron continues to be a major part of this community. He signed me off to solo the T6. He still flies all the airplanes here, but has since passed the chief pilot mantle to Dave. And Luke's flight requires him to be solo, which is why he needed to do the insurance sign-off flight with the chief pilot. When you're going to qualify the airplane, you're going to take it to the G-limit? Any maneuver you can do with four, no problem. Oh, for sure. I can take it to six if you want. Transport Canada outlines, it's called the simplified aerobatic, you know, one-off, yeah, simplified one-off aerobatic uh, demonstration flight. They provide a list of the things that you're supposed to do. Experimental airplane, the airworthiness of it depends on who built it. So when your airplane is built and it's finished, um, it's you know, it's good for a number of things, you know, day VFR, it's very limited in its envelope. It has to be proven in other areas, aerobatics being one of them, as opposed to a certified airplane where it's gone through a regulator to prove, you know, all the things that need to be proven with strength and, and all that stuff in the long term. Clear! So Vans publishes that the airplane you know, is good to plus or minus, you know, plus six, minus three, which is the standard aerobatic certification, but it's built by someone else. It's not built by a factory. So basically I have to go up there and make sure that it conforms to what, you know, the builder expects. So I'm gonna fly off the aerobatic restriction on the RV-14. The plan is gonna be to, to head out to kind of where we were before, get lots of altitude, and then just run it one by one through you know, a high-speed dive, we're gonna do some spins, loops, rolls, different types of rolls. Uh, we'll do a hammerhead, and we're just gonna look for anything unusual. Canopy closed and locked. Harnesses are secure. I don't expect there to be anything unusual being, a, you know, an, an RV. It's, it's, in many ways, it's, it's like a certified airplane in terms of predictability. But I'm just going to make sure everything is, uh, you know, performing as advertised. I don't expect anything unusual. Let's go make this an aerobatic airplane. Charlie Golf Alpha Tower straight out or right turn out is approved. Not above 2,500 in the zone from Alpha. Clear takeoff runway 1-2. Clear takeoff 1-2, uh, not above 2,500. Charlie Golf Alpha. Here we go. Flies. What a machine. Mm -hmm. 
So at this point, if you haven't seen the past content with Luke, you're probably wondering, who is this guy? And what makes him qualified to do the aerobatic sign-off for this airplane? Well, if that's you, first of all, you definitely need to go back and look at the catalog of all the awesome content we've shot together. But here's his resume in 30 seconds. Luke is a class one aerobatic flight instructor teaching at Harv's Air in Manitoba for over 16 years. He's a holder of a statement of aerobatic competency given to show flyers by the FAA. On top of being a perennial podium topper over seven years of competition, he's an aerobatic examiner and he's the 2022 Canadian National Aerobatic Champion and will be the team captain at the 2023 World Advanced Aerobatic Championships in Las Vegas, which I'm gonna join him to capture. Top it all off with 3,000 hours of aerobatics in dozens of different types and a total of 12,000 hours overall in close to 100 types of aircraft. So yeah, I can't think of anyone I'd rather have doing this. Like a new airplane with these wheel pants. Worth the effort. Oh yeah, right. Luke's initial flight with Dave did not have the wheel pants installed, so I got those put back on so that we would have the airplane in its total final configuration for the aerobatic sign-off. And they really do make a difference. All right, we'll climb to 6,000. And we'll do a diving check. I can for vibration, any flutter. Don't expect anything unusual here. Oh yeah, and I just wanted to point out that Luke is not using the fun switch. <laughs> we didn't need it, but yeah. <laughs> you're gonna need to remember that switch though. Or just don't arm the autopilot and it's the same. As just leave it. But it's cooler for the video if we use the ESP inhibit. We put in a caged red switch, man. Gotta use it. <laughs> for these flights, it's Luke's SOP to just leave the entire autopilot system disabled. Hey, Hazel, check. The height is 5,500. Area is exactly where we're supposed to be. Security, I am secure. Engine's looking great. And we're looking up. That will dive. Everything's good there. With you through, uh, 9, Controls get a little heavy beyond 170, but that's to be expected. Alright, I already stalled the airplane, so I'll spin it next. One and a half rotation turn to the left. Clearing the area, power's coming off. Backfiring. All's approaching. Ah, one. No drama. Sink rate. Man, I could stay up here all day. This is awesome. All right, clearing turn is good. Try a one and a half turn spin to the right. I'm expecting this to take a little more effort to recover. Call's approaching. One. One and a half. A little more forward stick required to break that stall, but as advertised recovery characteristics, I'll be fine with that. All right, we'll do a loop, aileron, barrel roll combination. At 160 knots. Here we go. Not available. Oh yeah, so aerobatics do cause some issues with the traffic functionality working correctly. Caution, sink rate. But the Garmin panel AHARS does a really good job capturing the track log even during aerobatics. This is Luke's basically perfectly executed loop being debriefed with Cloud Ahoy. This is definitely my favorite debriefing tool. It automatically recognizes particular maneuvers and even IFR procedures and can assign scores to them. The latest blog post talks about how they've just added eights on a pylon. Feels good. Taylor on roll, to the left. Yeah, I went up there and, you know, I flew 
nearly to V&E, making sure that there was no vibration, any unacceptable control loads, no hint of flutter, um, which there wasn't as we expect because it's, it's a very reputable kit. And to the right. Traffic not available. All good. Barrel roll to the right. And to the left. I have high confidence going into this environment. I just went through a whole basic aerobatic program, um, spins, you know, left and right direction, just looking for any characteristics, anything that, you know, either would be unacceptable or something that I'd really want to alert the pilot of if, if their background wouldn't, you know, be familiar with that phenomenon. Yeah, we'll do a half key then. Traffic not. Yeah, so I'll do a Humpty Bump. Over. The plane picks up speed very easily. A hesitation roll. Traffic not available. Hey, I'll do a hammerhead. One sixty. Nice hammerhead. Caution, sink rate. Six G pull, max will pull maximum G. Didn't quite get there. Pitch forces get pretty heavy. Kind of hard to pull at 20 G. That was only 4.8. Caution, sink rate. Alright, man, we'll do an element. Alright, that was 5.6. Things are still on. Everything's running great. Oil temperature is stable. Push the tanks. Area is clear. Alright, let's see if we can get this thing to 6 G's. I'll try it again. Maybe I'll try a little less airspeed. Reduce the stick forces a bit. Now if I do it in a descending line then. So I guess the good news is if Luke is having to work this hard to get it to max G. Caution, sink rate. It's gonna be really difficult to get it there by accident. Ah, six G's. Everything looks good, feels good at 6G. 
Alright, let's see if I think you got yourself an aerobatic airplane. And the stick forces are just heavy, that's just the thing. That's why I'm flying with two hands. And I could be here all day, but I better go back. I'm happy with the airplane, Steve. You got a great one here. We went to 6G, no issue. All maneuvers uh, perform as advertised. Oh, I didn't take a picture yet. That's unacceptable. There was nothing weird. Everything was as expected, as advertised throughout the whole range. And then uh, was satisfied with that, came back, and then deemed it uh, ready to do aerobatics. So next up in this series, I'll be jumping in with Luke to get my training and sign off to fly aerobatics in this airplane. And then we're going to follow Luke through his training and touch on some of the awesome stuff that we are honored to do with these airplanes flying at the Canadian Aviation Museum. Pass? Oh yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. Six G's. Awesome. Six G's. Six G's. Oh boy. Right there. <laughs> tore that, you know, that tore that sticker off that says we're restricted. Yes. Left some glue. <laughs> it's gone. Until the next one, keep your flight chops sharp. Make sure he gets it all the way to six. I want to know that it's good for all my mistakes. <laughs> good point. <laughs> he said, well, I'm glad I'm wearing a parachute. Uh, you know, it'd just be nice to know that it's been cleared all the way to six. Okay. Double like Echo, tower number one. Glad I brought a parachute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right.